Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the lilting Victor Herbert operetta, Eileen, starring Gordon MacRae and his charming young guest, Lucille Norman. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. Tonight, America's Railroad salute the Campfire Girls, an organization which for 43 years has worked to develop alert citizens and homemakers through a program which combines fun, friendship, and high ideals for girls between the ages of 7 and 18. Best wishes on your birthday tomorrow, Campfire Girls everywhere. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller. In the top of the evening to you, ladies and gentlemen. Lovely Lucille Norman will sing the title role of Eileen, and I'll be a Dublin daredevil named Barry O'Day. And any night along about moonrise, you can find me at the water's edge tricking the British with a bit of the smuggler's art. While ships may sail the sea, while man of us is free, while heaven sends us a misty moon, so why not take it as a gracious boon? If France and Spain have something we can use, they would be as gracious to we do. So free of tax or duty, we fetch ashore our booty, then bring to the mist or the moon. Night that's black with rain and wind and wave the thicker the better for when the sun comes out again. There's none the wiser at all. On six and brandy and slump and tate is devil a penny we have to pay. Come then, gave me the fault of it up and we'll drink a room. Tallo, tallo, free trade and a misty moon. That's the way we got our victuals in the days of the Great Tribulation. Smuggle them ashore on Dublin Bay by the light of a misty moon. I know, because I was one of the smugglers. The ringleader. Not a very respectable occupation, you say. Well, it is dangerous sometimes in Ireland to be too respectable. You might get yourself mistook for an Englishman. Now look at that carriage galloping up Westmoreland Bay. The crowd's giving him an angry time. Hmm. Probably some fancy English lord wished he'd stayed at home. I beg you, let my carriage pass through. Why, it is a Colleen in that car. A pretty one, too. Hi there, me buckles. Ah, it is Barry. Barry O'Day. Is there no chivalry left in Ireland? She's an English woman. Well, pity her, then. Faith, we can't all be lucky enough to be Irish. Come now, clear the path, boys, and let the ladies' carriage go through. I'll ease your horse, ma'am. There's nothing to fear. Sure, and it's that grateful I am to you. Sure? And what kind of talk is that for an Englishwoman to be speaking? My name's Eileen. Does that sound like an English name? Well, then what were they bothering you for? Ah, your horse must be English. I should say not. His name's O'Shaughnessy. I think it's the carriage that made the crowd angry. It belongs to Colonel Lester. And why would you be mixed up with the likes of him? I met him in London. My parents sent me to school there. What folly. Who, O'Shaughnessy? Who? Then I think you'll be safe enough to travel on your way now, Miss Eileen. Thank you so much. I can see from the way you handle horses, you're an excellent groom. Now, how can I repay you? No charge. Nay, a small one, perhaps. A kiss on the cheek. What? Do you fancy I'm in the habit of handing out kisses to grooms and lackeys? And what if I did fancy such a fancy? I beg you to let me continue on my way. Well, am I stopping you? Get up, O'Shaughnessy. <laughs> There's nothing like the looks of a proud, angry woman. You think I'm a groom, do you? And I'd be perfectly willing to be a groom, Eileen. If you'd be the bride. Oh, I 
I'm in love, I'm in love with a slip of a girl. And if I should be manly or sad, I don't know. For my heart is a fire and my head is a whirl. Yet I'm suffering for her, so I'm glad that tis. For her hair is that black And her eyes are that blue She's the form of some proud little queen Tis that neat While her cheeks are like roses New kissed by the dew And the name of the darling I lean sure that sweet I lean But my heart you have captured Tis you that I love You I adore My soul with your charm is enraptured Oh, lovely are not going to let a blue-eyed and freckle nose the size of a button sway your devotion to the cause. Oh, no. Put her out of your mind, Barry, me boy. Oh, Shaughnessy. Oh. May I inquire a question of you, Shaughnessy? <laughs> he may be only a groom, but you liked him, didn't you, Shaughnessy? <laughs> So did I. He has a way with horses, tis true. And say, I don't think horses are the only creatures he has a way with. Creep. 
much of a fool you are, Eileen Mulvaney, letting yourself fall in love with a man when you don't even know his name. Barry! Barry O'Day! What is it, Sean? The Redcoats. Colonel Lester is on his way here. He's sworn to take you, Barry, dead or alive. Oh, 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 oh me bucko. There's a mighty difference between the swearing and the doing. Out of the window and over the rooftops. Does he want a chase? Very well. We'll give him one. The love of Free Island. Open the door. Who is it? Don't light the lamp. I'd make a fine target here in this doorway. Very well. Ah, St. Patrick's be praised. No light now. Please wait till the redcoats go by. Your voice, it's so familiar. Well, I'm a very familiar sort of a fellow. So the ladies tell me. Must she light that candle, lass? <gasps> Tis you. Why, I, Eileen. Oh, I was bitter mean to you in the high street this afternoon. Can you forgive me? Why, if you pay me the price I ask for my services. Hmm, when a man can kiss like that, why should he waste his time grooming horses? <laughs> I'm not a groom. I'm Barry O'Day. The famous smuggler? Oh, tis one of me lesser talents. Why, there's a price on your head. Not nearly so high as the value I put on it myself. But Colonel Lester's sworn to kill you. Uh, would that make you sad, Eileen? It's only a sprinkling of hours I've known you, Barry O'Day. But would make me very sad indeed. Tell me, why is there a doubt within thy heart, Eileen? Why? I but fear the time will come when we must part. Alas, I should die. doesn't know me. Hide. But why? He'll search the house. The best hiding place is no hiding place at all. Come in, sir. I thank you. My compliments, Miss Eileen. Good evening, Colonel Lester. We are searching for an escaped renegade called Barry O'Day. Oh? And what does he look like, sir? None of our people have ever seen him. But from descriptions, I should say he is about your build and about your height. 
And hear about my color and my color eyes. Uh, Colonel Lester, there has been no one here this night. Then who might this gentleman be? Gentleman? Oh, I'm no gentleman. I'm the groom. And I've been with a family. Uh, how many years has it been, me lady? Is this true, Miss Eileen? Yes. For the sake of our friendship in London, Miss Eileen, I shall take you at your word. Good night. Good night, Colonel. You're a brave one. I lied to him. I lied to a tie on his truth in the Patriots book. And whenever we tricked him, outwit or outnumber them, hamper them, hinder them, hasten them out of the Ember Isle, every Irishman rejoices, Eileen. For it means the hour of victory is drawn nearer. That triumphant hour, may the tyrant spurn now and forevermore be broken. Hearts and sorrow tried, teeth with loyal pride, mind are spoken, land, land to Gilgo So, friends, proudly we stand, undaunted still, glad to fight for our land, true good or ill. Come. Time is now and then, gladly for our native we'll land, for the right to we'll bravely fight against alien laws for freedom's cause of night. In just a moment, we'll return with Act Two of Eileen. You recognize that song? It's On Top of Old Smokey, one of my favorite folk songs, and perhaps one of yours. It's a love song in a way. You remember this verse? She'll hug you and kiss you. And tell you more lies Than cross ties on a railroad Or stars in the sky Well, there aren't as many cross ties on the railroads as there are stars in the sky. But there are an awful lot of them. More than a billion in the United States, in fact. And they're mighty important to the hundreds of members of the American Railway Engineering Association who are getting together in Chicago tonight for their annual meeting this week. These men are concerned with the problems of building, maintaining, and improving railroad tracks and structures. In carrying on this research, the 225,000 miles of railroad in this country is their proving ground, the world's largest. And better, more efficient railroad service for all of us is their goal. Now take cross ties, for example. About 30 million of them have to be removed every year and replaced with new ones. And it costs about $5 to replace each tie. Anything, therefore, that can be done to lengthen the life of a tie represents a considerable saving in money. And thanks largely to the research activities of the American Railway Engineering Association, improvements in the treatment and handling of cross ties have been so great in the past 50 years as to multiply the average life of a tie about three times. Now, that's just one of an endless series of results achieved through the constant research carried on by the railroads, the kind of research that continues to make the American railroads the most efficient and economical and safest transportation system in the world. Now, here is Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee dramatization of Victor Herbert's Eileen, starring Gordon McRae as Barry O'Day and Lucille Norman as Eileen. Tis a great day tonight for the Irish, for the cause we've fought for and died. And the time is soon to be when you'll see old Ireland free. Tis the land of our love and our pride. Despise and defy our oppressors And their tyrant laws we will fight But as fast as they can make them For God or we can break them Sure the Irish have a great day tonight Tis a great day tonight For the Irish For the cause 
Good news is bad news, me buckle. I have got to leave Ireland. Leave Ireland? Ah, sure, you're not in your right mind, me boy. There's people in France, Sean, who can help us with the cause. And I've been appointed to make the journey. A bloomin' ambassador. Tell me, will we have to bow and salute to you, Mr. O'Day? Oh, never, never. Uh, it's that sad I'll be to leave the shores of Ireland. And, and Eileen, you'll be missing her too, no doubt. Tis true. It's a thought-provoking thing, Sean, how a man's heart gets caught up with smiles and scenery and the memory of a kiss or two. And your head over heels in love with a Colleen in the country she comes from. It is hard to say goodbye. When far from the land that I'm proud to call my own, I repine to the heart of me so. And I dream of the past and the happiness I've known While my soul seems to whisper for and old Tell me when shall I again Foolish thing, I know, but I've got to see Eileen before I leave Ireland. Oh, Barry, dear Barry. Eileen. I'm that glad to see you, I am. But you should never have come. I'm off for the continent, Eileen. And heaven knows when I'll see you again, Alana. But Colonel Lester's suspicious. He's had guards posted watching the house ever since the night when the you... The night were... when you posed as a groom. Wasn't that it, Barry O'Day? Colonel Lister. Let me get a good look at you. Ah, so that's what a rebel looks like. Pray, Colonel Lester, for the sake of our old friendship, you'll not take him. You'll not take me alive at any rate. Put away your toys. As you can see, I have no weapons. A trick it is, then. A cowardly Tory trick. You misjudge us, Mr. O'Day. You talk like a man with a price on his head. There is. A thousand pounds for Barry O'Day. Dead or alive. No longer. What? I'm taking my leave of this pestilent island, and Lord Cornwallis is taking my place. His first act as governor of Ireland is to grant full pardon to all persons connected with the Irish rebellion. Oh, glory be. Then they won't be after hunting you down anymore, like a fox in the brush. Isn't it glorious, Barry, to be a free man? Uh, faith, and I wouldn't know about that, Eileen. Aren't you happy? You won't have to leave Ireland. The head is me own again, it is true. And there's no price on it. But now... My sweet, I've lost an equally valuable piece of property. My heart. 
What a foolish one you are now, Barry O'Day. You can have mine. Lucio Norman will be back in just a moment. And meanwhile, our hearty thanks to Carlton Young, Dan O'Hurley, he and our entire company. Eileen, with music by Victor Herbert and book and lyrics by Henry Blossom, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? To most of us, the word railroad calls to mind freight and passenger trains highballing across the countryside. But equally important to a railroad is the track on which the trains run, the rail, the ties, the roadbed. For it would not be possible to handle the heavy traffic of today without the constant improvement that has been made in track. This work, which is carried on by such railroad organizations as the American Railway Engineering Association, is important to all of us, for it points the way towards still better railroad service tomorrow. Thank you, Marvin. Now, folks, here again is our bright young guest, Lucille Norman. Happy half hour, wasn't it, Gordon? Oh, some mighty pretty music in Eileen. And Lucy, you were wonderful as always. Well, thanks. What will we be hearing on the show train next week, Gordon? Well, I'll be trading in my Irish shillelagh for an oriental lute. A lute? Mm-hmm. We're doing a lovely story of the Far East called Lute Song. And Mimi Benzel will be with us to sing some music that sounds like this. If you need me, I will be divine. I promise to be listening, Gordon. Good night. Good night, Lucy. We'll see you soon. All aboard. Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so, until next Monday night and glute song, this is your friend Gordon McRae saying good night. Eileen was presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can soon be seen starring in the Technicolor production, The Desert Song. Our choir was under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music was prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Until next week, this is Marvin Miller saying good night for the American Railroads. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Oh!